In the Disney movie Aladdin, Aladdin makes his arrival to the city of Agrabah as Prince Ali with a grand parade and lots of fanfare as he seeks to meet Princess Jasmine. Make way for Prince Ali, his heralds shout to the onlooking crowd. But even as amazing as his grand entrance was, it can't even compare to the greatest fanfare of all time and the greatest kingly introduction that will come at the end of time when Jesus returns to earth. People all over the world will be going about their normal daily lives, sleeping, doing chores, playing video games, when suddenly the Lord Jesus will come down from heaven. The archangel will announce his arrival and trumpets will sound. Everyone on the whole earth will hear it. Well, why is Jesus coming back? Just as God judged the people of the earth through the flood in Noah's day, Jesus is coming to judge the earth and it will catch many people by surprise. The Bible tells us to be ready for Jesus' return. And you can be sure that you are ready when you put all your faith in him so that when he comes back to judge the earth, you will be welcomed into heaven as part of God's family. Nobody knows when Jesus is coming again. Some people have tried to predict when it will happen, but all of them have been proven to be false. Jesus said that no one knows the day or the hour, but only his Father in heaven. Well, what's going to happen when Jesus comes back? When Jesus returns, he will come down in the clouds and be robed in light, and he will shout a command and all of the bodies of everyone who died trusting in Jesus will rise again from the dead. Can you imagine thousands of people rising up from their graves all at once? How amazing! Their spirits, which went to be with Jesus when they died, will rejoin their new glorified bodies and rise to meet Jesus in the air. Just like the resurrected body of Jesus, their bodies will be completely free of sickness and death and sin. People who were blind on earth will be able to see. People who had cancer will be healed. And those who couldn't even speak will be singing and shouting. Then the believers who are still alive when Jesus comes back will receive new bodies too. They will rise up into the sky and join all of God's family from the past, like Paul and Moses, Elijah, Mary, Abraham, and Sarah, all right there in the clouds. And after Jesus returns and takes the believers with him, those who rejected Jesus will realize they were wrong. People who said things like, there is no God, or the universe was created by itself, and others who thought they didn't need Jesus and said things like, all roads lead to heaven will not be changed. They will not get new glorified bodies. Instead, they will face judgment. When Jesus Christ takes his seat on his judgment throne, all those who died while rejecting Jesus will be called out of the place of the dead to face judgment along with those who are still alive. The Bible says that the people who did not believe in Jesus while on earth will have no choice but to bow their knee and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Then they will have to stand and be judged before God's throne. God will judge all sin on that day, even things that no one else knows that have been said or done in secret. Jesus said in Luke 12 verse 2, The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. The record books of heaven will be opened and read. Those who did not trust in Jesus to save them from their sin those whose names are not in the book of life will be sent away from God forever. The Bible calls this place by many names. Hell, the lake of fire, the second death. All of them stand for a place where there is no love and no life. Once and for all, the enemy, the devil, will be cast down and defeated forever. Just like the days of Noah, God will scrub the world clean of all sin and evil. But this time... There won't be any sin left to spoil the new clean world. God will make the heavens and the earth brand new. But for those who have put their trust in Jesus, instead of having to answer for all their sins at the judgment seat of Christ, they can say, I'm with Jesus. Jesus' death on the cross has already paid for their sins. If you trust Jesus for salvation, when you stand before God, you will be welcomed in with these words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Jesus will give us crowns of everlasting life and perfect righteousness. Our struggles with fear and sin and death will finally be over. The very best thing about when Jesus returns is that we will see God face to face and worship him. Oh, he comes.
the Bible when some of Jesus' disciples asked him about things that would happen at the end of time when Jesus would return. Jesus explained his return to them in Mark chapter 13. He said, but concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and he puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. And so we're gonna be making stay awake roosters today to remind us to be ready for Jesus' return to make sure that we are awake and alert in doing what Jesus called us to do, to follow him on life's adventure and to be telling others of the good news of the gospel. So what we're gonna need is a paper bag, like a little sandwich bag. That's gonna be our rooster and he can be either just a little rooster to sit there or he can be a puppet. You can put your hand in here and we can make a rooster puppet that way. So we'll need a paper bag. We're gonna need some tape, a pair of scissors, a crayon or a marker to draw with, a couple different colors of construction paper, and if you have them, uh, you can get some little feathers that are fun to put on that little guy, and we need some more construction paper. We're gonna cut out a, a diamond out of it for his beak, and then if you have them too, you can either draw some eyes, or I found these little googly eyes um, in our little craft storage, so we're gonna put those on him. And so we're gonna make our little stay awake roosters here today. So let's start. First, we're gonna take our bag here and we're going to take our little paper diamond that we cut out and we're gonna fold it end to end here, point to point, just like that. And we're gonna tape it on and we're gonna need to start on this, this side because if he's a puppet, it's gonna go this way. So we'll put it right here. We're gonna tape it on. We're gonna roll up our tape so it's sticky on both sides. We'll just stick it right on the back. We'll stick it right on there. There we go. So now, we go like this. 
I have no eyes yet. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out some little tail feathers for him. So we can draw them here first and then we'll cut them out. So feathers kind of go like this, kind of pointy at the top and come down and pointy at the bottom. Maybe we'll do a couple orange ones. There we go. And then we'll do a couple red ones too. Go. All right, so let's cut these ones out. All right, Mr. Stay Awake Rooster's got his tail feathers here, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tape them to the back of our puppet like this so that they kind of stick out the, the back of them like that. All right, let's do that. We'll take our tape, and this time, we won't have to roll it up. We can just tape them on the back, because people won't see our, our tape back here. So there's one. There's another one. We'll do orange on one side, and we'll do red on the other side. Red feather, and here's the last one. All right, so now he's got one side orange and one side red. That looks great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape on his his little head feathers. This is a rooster after all. He's got some feathers up top. So we'll turn him back over again, and we'll arrange feathers how we want them to go, and we'll just put some tape across it. He's gonna be a very colorful rooster here. He's got orange and blue and yellow feathers. You may have to put a, a few of them on there. To make sure they hold down pretty good. There we go. All right, he's looking pretty good. Now all we have left to do is his eyes. And you know what, for his eyes, I'm gonna pull out some glue here that I had hidden away. Cause I don't want tape to be sticking outside of his eyes. So we're gonna put a couple glue dots where his eyes should be. You know what, that looks kinda good. You could just give him glue eyes. Or, but you, we're gonna, <laughs> gonna put some googly eyes on him here. So just lay it down there and put it in. Oh, <laughs> have to wipe off his contact lens. There we go. All right. That is one crazy looking stay awake rooster. All right. So then we're going to take our uh, crayon or marker and we're going to write on him. Stay awake. Jesus is coming. Okay, so every time you get out your stay awake rooster and play with him, you can uh, look at him and you can remember to stay awake, stay alert and be ready for Jesus to come back because we don't know when it will happen. So we want to be ready. Life skill. Life skill. Life skill. You know what? I love chips. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, barbecue chips. These are my favorite. You should try it. Mmm! Those are delicious! But, I don't have any chips left. They're all gone. 
Uh oh. I made a big mess. Um. I wonder what I'm gonna do. Oh! I know! I can sweep it up! That's a great skill to have, and I can teach you how to do it! All you need is a broom. Handy dandy broom. And you need a dustpan. This dustpan's got a pole on it. All you need to do is you hold the dustpan with one hand. If you don't have a pole, you have to lean down and hold it down here. And you take your broom in the other hand, and you start sweeping it into a pile. See, look at all these chips. I should have been more careful when I was eating. This, I could have eaten all of these chips, but now I can't. They're all over the floor. Just gotta sweep all the chips into a pile. And then, once you get them into a pile, Look at that nice little neat pile right there. Once you get them in the pile, you hold your dustpan next to the chips, and you just brush them into the pan. And then sometimes, not all of them are gonna get in, so you can just back it up a little bit, and get anything that is left over into the pan. Look, here's one more. Oh, here's another one over here. Man, that was really messy. And then, you take your dustpan, Take it over to the trash. Get them all out. And that's it. So there you go. In case you go on a chip rampage like I just did, you'll know how to sweep it up after you're done. And it'll be all clean. Our memory verse this week comes from Revelation 22, verse 12. Jesus says, Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me, to repay all people according to their deeds. Let's say that again. Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me, to repay all people according to their deeds. Revelation 22, 12. I've had so much fun spending time with you boys and girls. Hopefully, our time together has given you the tools that you need for life's great adventure. I pray that these biblical truths from the lessons we learned and the hymns we sang, that they shape your heart and your mind. Start putting to practice all of the life skills that you learned too. All of these things are preparing you to launch out with Jesus on the great adventure of life. Godspeed. <laughs>